A new law in Missouri that requires more accountability from charter schools takes effect next month. But is it already too late for a school bearing the name of one of Kansas City's most beloved athletes? Investigator Ryan Kath shows how low test scores and money problems are creating an uncertain future at Derek Thomas Academy. It's picked up by Kansas City. Derek Thomas, the 20, the 10, the 5, touchdown! Derek Thomas was one of the biggest names on the Kansas City sports scene. And after his death, his legacy continued in the classroom. We come to dedicate a place of learning to a professional athlete. When this charter school opened its doors a decade ago, there were big names on hand and big hopes about what the building could do for students. This is something that he always wanted, and this is one of his dreams, and now that his dream is really coming true, I am so excited about it. But the school built in number 58's honor is on shaky ground. An uncertain future all captured in this April letter obtained by 41 Action News. I think anyone who read this letter would have said, this school doesn't have a chance. Uh, well, at that time, it looked look pretty bleak. Jerry Cooper is the director of the Charter School Center at UMKC, which sponsors Derek Thomas Academy. Every charter school in Missouri needs a sponsor before it can teach kids. It's Cooper's job to make sure the school goes the extra yard academically and financially. We believe as a sponsor it's extremely important to hold them accountable. Cooper's letter delivered a harsh wake-up call to Derek Thomas Academy. It said the charter school was financially stressed, operating more than $600,000 in the red. It listed several violations of charter school laws, including breaking a contract with its management company, Edison Learning, without sponsor approval. It also said the school was on academic probation for low test scores and was not meeting the needs of special education students. Finally, it threatened that without serious improvement, the upcoming school year would be its last. You painted a pretty bleak picture. Yes, I did. And the reason being is, is that uh, we really wanted to get their attention. We felt like we only have so much time to correct this. But the letter didn't just get the attention of administrators. It also circulated through the building. People panicked. And according to UMKC, up to 45 staff members, including both principals, left the school to pursue other jobs. When the letter circulated, uh, leadership at Derek Thomas Academy wasn't as transparent as it could have been, and it kind of allowed some of these rumors to persist. Is that a fair assessment? I would agree to that. Betty Brown has been on the school board since the beginning, and she took over as president last winter. She's now trying to lead a fourth quarter rally. There's enough blame probably to go around for everybody. Brown was one of the authors of this letter to parents last August, which discussed a legal battle between charter schools and Kansas City public schools. Charter schools had argued they were entitled to the same funding as Kansas City, including desegregation settlement dollars. However, a judge had ruled charter schools had to pay back desegregation segregation money they'd received. In the case of Derek Thomas Academy, this amount was about $800,000. The letter to parents said, quote, DTA was smart and did not spend one penny of the $800,000 we received. Is that true? We did have to use some, but um, that money is being put back in. So what happened to the money? Spent the money paying bills. Bills that had piled up from other decisions, like breaking the contract with the school's management company without a plan in place to pay out the remainder of the contract. But just months before being labeled as financially stressed, Brown and others had assured parents in August, DTA is in good financial standing. Do you think that statement was, was accurate, or did it sugarcoat things a little bit? No, I, it was accurate. So in a very short time, the financial situation here grew pretty bad. It was a little mismanaged. You spend money that you don't have, so you take it from someplace else. What you just described there, is that what most people consider to be robbing Peter to pay Paul? Well, I guess you could say that. But Brown says there's a new team in place with a financial playbook to get Derek Thomas Academy out of debt. The school is also back in line with state special ed requirements. How confidently can you predict the future of this school? I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, I know they've got to meet all our standards. The most important of those standards is test scores that will arrive later this summer. It's a crucial report card that will determine if Derek Thomas's legacy will live on in these hallways. You don't know if the school will be open past the upcoming school year? I believe in my heart uh, there's a person that's upstairs I believe is talking to God. After reviewing test scores, UMKC will be faced with a decision. 
Renewing is a sponsor for five more years or shutting down the school next spring. If Derek Thomas Academy does close, Mark and Krista were talking about about 900 students that will be looking for new schools. Mm -hmm. And has this uncertainty affected enrollment already? They don't know yet. We asked about that. They're going to be getting a sense of some of those fall enrollment numbers later this summer, probably about the same time some of those test scores roll sure. in. I did talk to one parent who is pulling her three kids out of the school because she has concerns about the uh, school's future. But my sense is that because we're in the summer right mm -hmm. now, a lot of parents probably don't know what's at stake up until right oh, now no. it is. Right. All right. Thanks, Ryan. According to the Department of Elementary and Edu Secondary Education, several charter schools have closed over the past five years in Kansas City. They are Academy of Kansas City, Don Bosco Education Center, Renaissance Academy of Environmental Science and Math, and finally Urban Community Leadership Academy. Ryan's investigation started with a tip. If there's something you'd like us to check out, send an email to investigators at kshb.com.